We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI? You mean artificial intelligence? A singular consciousness that spawned an entire race of machines. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. It's less of a worry than it used to be, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. It's not necessarily bad, it's just, it's definitely going to be outside of human control. The thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting, in fact, it will be used as a weapon. So the, the on-ramp to serious AI the danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think, most likely. That'll be the danger. Some researchers believe that superintelligence will likely follow shortly after the development of AGI. The first generally intelligent machines are likely to immediately hold an enormous advantage in at least some forms of mental capacity, including the capacity to perfect recall a vastly superior knowledge base, and the ability to multitask in ways not possible to biological entities. So the reasonable concern about a possible extinction level event from digital superintelligence stems from the period of time in which narrow AI achieves artificial general intelligence, where presumably in this time frame we can do something to stack the odds in our favor. In contrast to narrow AI displayed by current computers, AGI is intelligence demonstrated by machines where a system is specified by its top-level functional capabilities, such as reasoning, knowledge, planning, learning, communication, perception, and the ability to move or manipulate objects. Many different components are involved when these capabilities are implemented in software or hardware. Today, right now, with our seemingly endless desire for better, faster and cheaper technology, we are collectively contributing in building future AI systems, whether we are aware of it or not. As Elon Musk put it, we are the biological bootloader for AI. Well, I mean, you could argue that any group of people, like a company is essentially a cybernetic collective of people and machines. That's what a company is. And then there are different, there's different levels of complexity in the way these companies are formed. And then there are sort of, there's this sort of like a collective AI in the Google sort of search where we're all sort of plugged in as like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree. We're all feeding this network without questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI. And Google plus the, all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. Well, I made this comment some years ago, but it feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. While critics and skeptics alike argue and some label the worry of risk of extinction from superintelligent AI as alarmist messaging or as something we might be worried about far off in the future, there are undeniable potential huge risks from narrow AI facing us today. Lethal autonomous weapons are a type of autonomous military system that can independently search for and engage targets based on programmed constraints and descriptions. Current U.S. policy states, autonomous weapon systems shall be designed to allow commanders and operators to exercise appropriate levels of human judgment over the use of force. But are countries like China or Russia going to implement and bind to these kinds of policies? The question almost answers itself. Another risk stemming from current narrow AI is automation. While the risk of job losses due to automation is high and will be dreadful for those affected by it, it is by no means something our society can't recover from. There are, however, dangers lurking in the creation of seemingly benign AI systems that might be malignant in the future. Current narrow AI systems are made to automate mundane tasks and serve our needs. Thus, AI of today is created in our own image. 
the AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system and all those things, the sort of primal drives. There's all, all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're a projection of our limbic system. In some measure, like, it's that the success of these online systems is sort of a function of, of how much limbic resonance they're able to achieve with people. The more limbic resonance, the more engagement. Things are getting more and more connected. They're, at this point, constrained by bandwidth. Our input-output is slow, particularly output. If we were to find out that our worst fears will be realized and the advent of digital superintelligence will result in human extinction, our first knee-jerk reaction would be to question if there was ever a point in time where we could have done something to prevent it. The obvious answer is that we don't know, but there is a logical first step. The regulation of artificial intelligence is the development of public sector policies and laws for promoting and regulating AI. In 2017, Elon Musk called for regulation of AI development. According to National Public Radio, Elon was clearly not thrilled to be advocating for government scrutiny that could impact his own industry, but believed the risks of going completely without oversight are too high. I think people don't, like the, normally the way that regulations work, it's very slow, it's very slow indeed. So usually there'll be something, some new technology that will cause damage or death, there will be an outcry, there will be an investigation, years will pass, there will be some sort of insight committee, there will be rulemaking, then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. If you look at, say, automotive regulations, how long did it take for seat belts to be implemented, to be required? You know, the auto industry fought seat belts, I think, for more than a decade, successfully fought any regulations on seat belts, even though the numbers were extremely obvious. If you had a seat belt, on, you would be far less likely to die or be seriously injured. It was unequivocal. And the industry fought this for years successfully. Eventually, after many, many people died, regulators insisted on seat belts. This time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. The technological singularity is a hypothetical point in time at which technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. According to the most popular version of the singularity hypothesis, called intelligence explosion, an upgradable intelligence agent will eventually enter a runway reaction of self-improvement cycles each new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an explosion in intelligence and resulting in a powerful superintelligence that qualitatively far surpasses all human intelligence. Besides Elon Musk, many other public thinkers such as Stephen Hawking have expressed concern that full artificial intelligence could result in human extinction. According to the Future of Humanity Institute, the estimated probability for human extinction before the year 2100 is 5%. The consequences of the singularity and its potential benefit or harm to the human race have been intensely debated. Four polls of AI researchers, conducted in 2012 and 2013 by Nick Bostrom and Vincent Mueller, suggested a median probability estimate of 50% that AGI would be developed by 2040 to 2050. People call it the singularity, and uh, that's, that's probably a good way to think about it. It's, it's a singularity. It's hard to predict, like a black hole, what happens past the event horizon. It could be terrible, and it could be great. It's not clear. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. One common criticism of Elon Musk is his focus on the development of AI systems such as Neuralink, the implantable brain-machine interface, all while he warns about the dangers of AI. While some view this as hypocrisy, Elon Musk, like many others involved in the field of AI, believe that the ultimate solution to the AI control or alignment problem is the merging of AI with humans. The merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. If you can't beat it, join it. So from a long-term existential standpoint, that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. 
The merging of AI with humans and machines in a symbiotic relationship to reduce the risk or avoid the extinction scenario completely is the ultimate goal of Neuralink. Right now, they are focused on enabling people with paralysis to directly use their neural activity to operate computers and mobile devices with speed and ease. In April 2021, Neuralink demonstrated a monkey playing the game Pong using the Neuralink implant. Hopefully, the merge scenario between humans and machines will prove to be key for solving the AI control problem.